I think it's important to bring up why to to the good people uh, watching us and listening to us right now, why underneath our name it says politics ruins everything. I mm. think that's apropos for Barbie. Politics ruins everything. We're talking about Barbie. Um, all right, so I. I think our plan originally was not to watch this. Like, I really didn't have any interest in it. Um, I think even before we kind of talk about the the messaging in this, which is going to be an interesting discussion. Um, th- this movie w- was not made for two men in their 30s. Uh, and, unless yeah. uh, you are... Um, Going specifically for Ryan Gosling and for y- y- you get what I'm saying. Um, yeah, like and, if you if you like a particular actor and you're going just to see another movie they're in. Yeah, um, I was more Although going like if has. if you are uh, homosexually attracted to <laughs> Ryan Gosling, you probably uh. <laughs> would have would have gone to see this. Um, beyond that, uh, th- this is a really interesting movie. Uh, for a couple of reasons, it is killing it at the box office. Um, it's Dude, over killing. killing it. It's over its projections and on a hundred million dollar budget. On a hundred million dollar budget, that roughly right. We know that that. Yeah. But even if like we we put in the two times the two point five, whatever the case may be, um, on on budget, uh, it's already making money. It it's it's in the green at this point, and its trajectory seems to be staying pretty steady like the movie's doing quite well um and it's it's a really interesting thing to look at from that perspective because and the reason I decided I wanted us to talk about this uh was because uh Brittany Venti did a live stream and I didn't watch much of it because I was trying to kind of stay away from a lot of uh what was in the movie uh like I had told you when I was like hey maybe we should actually do this we might as well you know, hop on the train and and talk about you know what is probably the most popular movie out right now. Um, uh, she she was talking about political brain rot, and I thought that was a really interesting thing to say about this movie because there were a lot of people in conservative circles, and as many of you know, we are not exactly fans of the Daily Wire. Um, here That's at the underground you, you, you love <laughs> you love Ben Shapiro don't um, lie but you know he was getting uh memed to death because he brought like a notebook to take notes at the movie um which that is didn't really bother me that bad. no it didn't really but I get why it's sort of like bro y- you have a phone like you <laughs> you don't need to you know it's like he's kind of hamming it up right um and I saw a little bits of of his review and what's happening right is that a lot of people are are calling the movie woke which you and i have discussed at this point that we don't like using the word because it doesn't really mean anything anymore um it's funny you bring that up yeah um and (sighs) there is a reason people would say that about this movie um and i don't think all of it is unjustified. Um, and I'll, I'll say this about the Barbie movie. If this was made 15 years ago, it might have been good. There's yeah. there's stuff in it that works. Um, yep. But there's a lot there's a lot of stuff that doesn't. And it again, um, a lot of it comes back to the writing and then the icing on top of it is a lot of the the messaging in it, if you will. And the thing about the messaging in this um, is that it's really confused. I, I, I'm gonna be yeah. honest and, and and maybe you you see this a little bit differently. Um, <laughs> I, I'm also not <laughs> Jenna's like I can't believe Daniel saw this did you go to a theater um yeah, you I will twice, ne- you? I will you neither confirm I will <laughs> I will ne- neither confirm nor deny lie. whether I went to the theater to see this I got um, the pictures use your imagination 
<laughs> That's um, why he bought that Subaru right after. Oh, <laughs> yep, yep. It just, it, sorry, guys. I'm a I'm a mole now. Got him. Um, where were we? Uh, yeah. Okay. So the messaging is is confused. It, yeah. It seems to be wanting to tell. And do you think she's setting that up? Let, let me interject. Yeah, for sure. With that op- with that opening scene where you know they're on, uh, <laughs> I would say Mars, but where they get it from? Uh, what's the movie Space Odyssey? Is that? Uh, movie? yeah, Space Odyssey. Odyssey. Uh, a space. Yeah. Uh, oh crap! I can't remember. I can't believe I'm forgetting yeah. the, name of the movie now. But she's pulling it from a Space Odyssey, the movie that released back in the fifties and sixties. Actually, I, wor- I watched it for the first time last year i want to say either Mm. last year or the year before that uh but anyway and so basically highlighting that what i was thinking oh there's going to be multiple subtexts to this movie right like each yeah you know as it progresses each scene there's gonna be multiple things going on and i think maybe i don't know i don't know if it's one of those one of those situations to where there was an attempt to be deeper than what it is or if it was just purely just trying to be satirical uh, see i don't i don't think it was just, there I'm, are there are times I'm when confused. it seems that way yeah i'm confused because I, I, well, what i was going to say is that I, in defense of the people calling it woke when the director says herself this is a super feminist film regardless of what i may think personally <laughs> about the film as yeah. i'm watching it that's going to be in the back of my mind. Whereas if the director would have just not said anything and just be like, well, you know, there's feminist parts here, there's this and that there, then yeah, because there's times at which I felt like they were making fun of uh, of everyone, right? Sure. But I, then it's like, well, are they, though? <laughs> yeah, it it's very, it's, it's all over the place. Um, and... You know, because we are the number one neurodivergent podcast in the world, you can say this. It's a little spazzy in places with its messaging. Um, spazzy, spazzy, spazzy. Oh my gosh. Ah. Um, there's. It, 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 it does that, like, that feminist thing, right? So the entire world is a matriarchy, and all of the kins are basically second class citizens um right. they're they now, basically you, hang on sorry did, go ahead did, before, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, before before we progress did you want to get into you, you started talking about ben shapiro and the daily wire yeah and Brittany Venti. did you want to get more into that or were not you not really that? that's just sort okay, of the peppering on top okay so am, amiss all the dunking on ben ben yeah. and and the daily wire and everything like that i actually watched pocahontas this past week uh, because yeah. it was a movie my wife wanted to watch, and <laughs> I enjoyed it when I was a kid too. So I don't, I don't really, I have no shame in, in saying that. But so I watched Pocahontas, and I was just curious. I was like, uh, the guy who plays John Smith, I'm like, it sounds a familiar voice. Let me look uh-huh. up on, on IMDb, right? And it was Mel Gibson. Well, anyway, oh, I, I okay. found yeah, when yeah, I was yeah. searching, when I was searching, I found the Rotten Tomatoes scores, and I was surprised that the critics had it down in like the 50s i want to say and then the audience score was in like the high 60s and so i read a bunch of different critic reviews and a bunch of different uh audience reviews and for the most part what i found is like so many people were basing their opinion of the film based on things outside of the film like they thought Hmm. it was going to be based on historical events and it didn't historically lined up and you know, that's but it wasn't goofy. actually based <laughs> on the film itself. And so that's yeah. kind of when approaching Barbie, because one of the things you and I, I think we, I think you mentioned it uh, a few minutes ago, we try and do is avoid everyone's reviews before we watch it and yeah. review it ourselves. We the, try and do those two things. The only review that I fully watched was the critical drinkers. Um, and that yep. was, that was before I, land on actually seeing the movie and um he's pretty he's pretty harsh on it and i i don't disagree but i di- i just don't want honestly i do, i just don't want to come at it from the exact same perspective because if you if you want a dunk session on this movie there's like a hundred other people who have already done it yeah 
Um, we want to come at it from an and, objective standpoint. Not that, that he wasn't being objective. <laughs> um, th- I, I didn't care for it. Um, but a lot of that has to do with what we typically talk about with this stuff, not necessarily the messaging. Um, because I've said yeah. in the past, if a movie is clever enough, um, well-written enough, and the acting is really good, you can like the person who wrote it could be a massive communist. And I might still enjoy the film. Right. Um, so all of that being said, there are things in this that if they were done better, they, they would work really well. Um, I think Ken is the strongest portion of this movie, uh, which is probably going to get a lot of people uh, making uh, accusations. Yeah. Um, he's the most well-developed thing in the movie until the end. And they just completely, yeah, really they fall flat on their face with his story arc at the end of the movie. Um, and I, I guess no one who's here really cares about spoilers, but I'll, for the, the sake of it, we are going to spoil this movie completely. Um, and I guess really just starting uh, starting with Ken's arc, um, you know, we were, we were kind of talking about how, so Barbie Land is basically um, a matriarchy. Uh, yeah. And to the point, it's not even sort of like well the kins are treated as equals they really are like second class citizens um someone in the troll room said accessories which i think is actually pretty apt um they are constantly like pining after the barbies because that's like their only purpose now a lot of people will be like oh my gosh i can't believe they did that in the movie and yeah, i'm going to probably behavior. that's beta male yeah. behavior <laughs> uh, and I'll, I'll i'll say this um it all depends on what they do with that and what they could have done and where they were try- it seemed like they kind of wanted to go this direction but i feel like they um they chickened out a little bit with the way that that all turns out is that they're kind of at one point trying to go for this idea of like your you don't have to be uh specifically like in this box right like you don't have to be trapped in this box of like ken and barbie are together right like uh, right. at, at one point, Ken's like, well, I don't know who I am without you. And they could have gone down this direction of being like, well, maybe it's time for you to find out. And they don't do that. What they basically do is have like this really awkward moment where he tries to like kiss Barbie at the end. And she's like, no, which, oh, dude, I'm going to be kind of all over the place with this because it, 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 it okay. kind of I, like I think, splinters. Um, I have a, uh, I have I have my own personal kind of like format I thought about in my head. And I wanted to ask you, what were you expecting this movie to be about, or were you expecting anything prior to going to see it? I didn't really know. Even after watching Drinker's review, I had sort of an overview of what it was, and for for the most part, his explanation of stuff in it was right, but there was still a lot of stuff, like, you know, he didn't go super, super detailed into it. Yeah. Um, so I had some idea, but it was still enough of a mystery to me that I didn't really know anything. Um, so I guess I guess I was kind of more so expecting it to be like the Lego movie. You know what I mean? Like a, a, a campy movie that's fun, that's entertaining. Yeah, there's probably going to be a bit of messaging in it. So what? Like, but nothing too on the nose, right? Uh, <laughs> and and that's not. For me, at least, at all, what we got, and that's, mm, you know, yeah. their prerogative, and um, that's fine. I just think, like, for myself, there's so many things that's on the nose that you're you're kind of the uh, that I think the audience is beat over the head with, even with the context, because I don't care about them talking about the patriarchy or about this or that, depending on what the context is around right. it, right? Right. Because uh, you could be funny about talking about the patriarchy in a good way. Well, there's uh, plenty of yeah, there's plenty of stuff that they could have, and that's the thing is that like the jokes are crazy inconsistent in this. There were a couple times that I did legitimately laugh out loud. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, hopefully, this one doesn't get us uh, at eight, eighteen plus. But there's this one part where like they go out into the real world and Barbie walks up to all of these construction workers and she looks at all of them. And she goes, "I don't have a vagina," and they all just look at her. And I was so caught off guard 
by her saying that and it, like i i think some like real world context like comes into play with that whether that was intended on their part or not but i just i found that to be unbelievably funny uh in the moment uh, but they're there, 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 there are quite of like i think there are like a handful of moments that are pretty funny yeah it, but they're so few and far between because there are all these other moments where you can tell that they are trying so hard to land jokes and they fall flat yeah. And it and it just oh man it, it's those moments where you're like oh this is it, it just becomes cringeworthy so it's like you're trying you're I'm sitting there watching this and going like mm, you know uh it would have been more interesting if they the the Barbies weren't aware of the outside world but and and this is part of the I know we're about to get into world building in the Barbie movie but this is important because it you don't get to get away with it just because of the type of movie it is and it's so funny i'm i I was watching it and and going like okay well why do all of the barbies know about the real world um and they're just okay with that and and they're they're okay with you know you know being manipulated that way and then like you find out that the humans know too and then like the fbi agent calls like a random worker and not someone who's like at the top of Mattel. That it's it's really weird just the way that the movie progresses. Yeah, and the way that it's like they know, and they're like, like they know that this is this real place or whatever. And like we you know we don't ever really get an, I don't think we ever get an explanation of like why this weird alternate dimension with Barbies exists with I their counter their counterparts. So. So the idea is that fantasy, why it exists, I don't know, but the idea about it existing is that it correlates directly with the human uh, girls that play with the Barbies. Yeah, and and, and so this there's that correlation. This was a, a point that the 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 drinker brought up that it's like okay, so you have this Barbie Land world, but then you have thousands and thousands of these Barbies who have gone out, and they're not they're not all there. Um, And they give you, like, an explanation as to, like, what happens to the crazy one. But what about all of the Barbies who had, like, limbs ripped off and heads ripped off? It's like, does that just conveniently not happen to this spot? It would have been funny, on that note, it would have been funny to have had a place in Barbie land that was in like the dump like on fire it was like the dark the dark secret of barbie land or whatever yeah (laughs) the dark side (laughs) that's the thing about this movie is that the premise behind it could work you could have done somewhat of a dark comedy with decent messaging if this was done right and i you know I, i and what i mean by that is like you know you have the the crazy barbie uh, stereotypical Barbie finds out, you know, she starts having these problems, and all of the other Barbies, like, they obviously don't know how to handle the situation, and, um, you know, maybe they start kind of treating her weird or whatever because of that, and she goes to see, like, the crazy Barbie, and then the crazy Barbie's like, oh, uh, that's because of the, the real world or whatever, and she's like, what are you talking about? And she's like, well, and you know, they give their explanation for for all of that, and so she has to kind of go on this this adventure. Ken comes with her, and along the way, you can have some of these ideas that they've got in there about like, okay, well, you know, maybe this whole like uh, idea that Ken and Barbie have to be together doesn't have to be a thing. You know, Ken finally one of the best. <laughs> it's crazy, dude. This, this movie like is so disrespectful um, to oh god. Whatever, I'm just gonna say it anyway. It's really disrespectful to men. Like it just and and not in like a, a poking and prodding kind of way, like, oh yeah, it, it's definitely like that. Like it's it does this thing where it makes men in the real world out to be completely like one dimensional. Yes. That there's no there's no um subtlety to humanity. Um, as a whole, because to be honest, it doesn't really do a lot of good for for women either. I don't. I don't think it, um, it, the movies seem too polarizing in the degree on how they yeah. characterize yeah people. And there's and men dude, uh, obviously right when they get in, right when she gets in the real world, it's just nothing but they're all sta- well, they're all like they're all like staring at her, yeah. and 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 like one guy comes up and like aggressions, yeah, like one guy comes up and like slaps her on the butt. And and I and I my first thought was, 
is this the world that Greta Gerwig and um, anyone else who helped her with the writing on this? Like, is this the world that they live in? Like, is this L.A.? Like, I've never been to L.A. And I, and I'm, I, I just, just was like, because because comedy and storytelling and all this stuff, it, it is, um, r- reality is a part of it, whether we're talking about fantasy or not. Um, all like, I all ideas have some bit of reality invested in them, and so when she comes out into the real world, and it's so like black and white the way that they're seeing everything where it's like well this is this is what it's like to be a woman and I'm just kind of like all right look I'm not one but it is it really like 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 this for you all the time or is this a paranoid delusion of what you think it is and what you think the people around you uh are doing all the time it's like a right. ran- random guy like you know Ken, Ken like Ken is still there when the like Barbie is and like Ryan Gosling's like a pretty big dude and I can't imagine someone would would just be like oh yeah right in front of what would assume be the boyfriend that you'd go and do something like that that doesn't seem like reality to me and so it's it's an odd story because they make out the real world to be just as fake as Barbie land in a lot of ways um it's like way over the top like all of the executives at mattel are just massive morons and it's supposed to be like for the joke but it's more yeah. frustrating to me watching it than it is like ha 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 look how stupid they are it's like oh they're stupid yeah isn't it so funny that they can't figure out how to get past the little uh th- uh security thing at the, at the front where Barbie just jumped right yeah. over it right in front of him. It's like... It's not, it's not my kind of comedy. You know what I mean? It, <sighs> it, it, it seemed it, it seemed to try hard, a lot, a lot it, of it, y- in yeah. that regard to yeah. the Mattel Corporation and Will Ferrell and his characterization, along with Alan, um, uh, the... I guess the stand-in for the male feminists in there, the, the character that uh, Michael Sarah plays... Uh, oh, no, uh then, what was his name? Alan. Alan. <laughs> yeah, he's the only one that's not Ken. His name's just Alan. And so that for me, it there's a lot of inconsistencies in regards to the film and the messaging it wanted to portray on the subtext layer rather than the main plot. Yeah. Orphan. You well, know? you know, people can say whatever they want, but like I actually felt for Ken. And a lot of it like he has the most like Barbie doesn't have an arc in this. I'm kind of I'm almost. I mean, Barbie should have an arc. Don't get me wrong, but I'm almost okay with it since she's supposed to be stereotypical Barbie. They say that at the beginning. Yeah, but they like I would have figured towards the end of the movie. It would have been her like trying to make uh, Barbie land or whatever it's called. uh, equal or like better yeah she's like man yeah she sees what's going on in the real world and goes oh that's what we're doing to the kins and i kind of thought that's what they were gonna what they were gonna go with that was like kind of do this like reverse thing where it's like oh you know we've been treating them as badly as we are portrayed as being treated in the real world, um, even though they went hard in the paint with that. Like, I think that's part of the problem I have with it is that they went so hard on, like, the patriarchy message in the real world that it's like, this is just isn't believable. It's like, th- this isn't life for for everyone. You know, it, it's, it, it, it's got this weird idea of the two sexes, and it's not going at it I think as hard as something like She Hulk did, or a lot of the other stuff that is is typically associated with this kind of messaging. Um, a few people in the troll room have pointed out that it does feel like stealth advertising, where it was like, "Oh, look at this fun, pretty pink comedy for girls about Barbie," and then you get in, and it's like there's lots and lots of um, just sort of like preachy ranting especially towards the end 
in and speaking it, <laughs> of, go ahead. you brought up Brittany Venti earlier. I actually yeah. listened to a large portion of her live stream. I'm like, oh, this is interesting. And while I was watching Barbie, it's funny that she brought up the satirical part. Like, that's how she was viewing it. Right. As, as satire. I was like, well, I tried to also view it that way. It just, I don't know if is because I'm not. I've seen better satires land. if that's the case. Yeah, it just you know didn't land I mean? for me because of how overhanded it was. Yeah. And it and the context and subtext surrounding every single time they brought up the patriarchy, it didn't feel like a joke in a satirical and, way as <laughs> in are... a I hate you type of yeah. you know, moment. And I could be wrong. I'm I'm happy to again, <laughs> we're not always right on everything. Sure. I'm happy to be corrected. There there are moments um where the satire sort of like works for me so like when ken goes to that one district and it's all these like some of that part okay so to be to just to get a little more into it like some of it worked for me some of it doesn't because they they have stuff in there where it's like you know oh stallions and um you know sylvester stallone in the big like coat or whatever and they're doing all these very when he goes into the library and pulls out a book on patriarchy yeah 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 there's stuff in it that i think does work the again it goes back to the problem that it's surrounded by a lot of stuff that i think falls incredibly flat that it's just and, and it's not it's not like trigger words or anything like that even though it, it's the way that they're describing everything and i'm i'm going like this just feels really tonally inconsistent um the further you get into the movie like when when the kins take over um and it's like oh they've brainwashed the barbies into thinking this way and it, it's like, okay, but weren't you guys in charge before? And now they're happy, and it shows them happy serving the kids. Yeah, just, and and here's the thing, too, is like, okay, so you're trying to go for, like, the, the oh, no, no, you, you don't want to be subservient to the men. And you're like, all right. And then, like, you don't have a single one of them. Oh, it, by the way, did you notice the... um the pregnant Barbie in the corner that just gets, it's just kind of there like, oh, I'm back yeah. here. And then like at one point she just gets like dissed by Will Ferrell. Like, oh, we discontinued that model. Like there is, okay. It's not, like satire can't be an excuse. And you watched more of the Brinty Vinti thing than I did. I was, she kind of mentioned the whole thing. And again, it went back to like, she said that and I went, all right, that's a good point. Uh, about this like political brain rot and i, I think it's true yep. I, I think no matter uh the re like her actual opinion on the movie which again want, i didn't want to get a lot of outside inter interference on this i really wanted to go in and be like okay let me see what i'm seeing with all of this and not do this whole like blah, 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 like you it's know so much better doing it that way yeah, yeah i agree um there's and, and like I said, some of it, and, and there are things in the movie that I think work and I find, I, I found somewhat entertaining, like the, the whole, like, like the Kins fighting each other and doing all that. And it's unfortunate that it's all surrounded by like the Barbies trying to do like a coup d'etat where like they they're saving Barbie Land's democracy from the Kins, and it's just one I of those things where you're like emotion and logic at uh, the same time. I, yeah, you're like great, um, dude. I audibly laughed when I heard that line. I'm like, yeah. come on, you have to be better at writing than this. <laughs> and that's but you that, have to be. It's so just. It, it's that's it's things like that. That it's almost like too much of an over caricature, yeah. In, in, in the movie, yeah. To where it's like, man, it, it's not having the same impact on me and others that I think they wanted. Like, I think the the marketing for this movie is great. Visually, this movie is great. Sure. Stylistically, this movie is great. Those are important elements to any film. It's important to know that stuff i enjoy the design like like having no you know sound playing at all just watching the film it looks visually nice yeah and is definitely geared and marketed towards women i mm -hmm. think they did a great job in making this like an event like the marvel movies became yeah the whole like, like bar barbieheimer thing that they've been doing where they've sort of been like oh look at this in these two insanely different movies that are out at the same time um the marketing behind all of it has helped both of those movies tremendously 
Yeah, um, and I think that uh, <clears throat> I think too it helped tap into letting studios know of the missing female market, if you want to even put it that way. Um, <laughs> I guess, yeah. But well, it's the, it, it's interesting because it the like a, a, well the chick flick would, the chick flick has kind of died. Yeah. You don't get um she's the man and um she's all that. Yeah, the uh Elizabeth Town, like stuff that when we were in high school, like that middle school high school time yep. period, the you know, there were chick flicks coming out all the time. Um, yeah, Jennifer Lopez was like a like one of the main stars in them from what I remember, Matthew McConaughey. What's that one with them in New York? that my wife likes <laughs> a serendipity like oh yeah I remember all, that one too. all of that House. yeah yeah like all that kind of stuff um so you don't see that much we anymore sure chick flick. yeah and you know there's just this okay so i i would be I willing was to hear excited to see this movie i, I feel like i'm probably <laughs> one of the only dudes that said that but i was like i like ryan gosling same he's w- one of my well, favorite actors he's the best this part of the movie dumb- for me like I agree. Yeah. He is the best part. His his development is the best. So I like him. This is something new and interesting. I wonder how they're going to spin this. I wonder if this is going to be like the Lego movies or how exactly they're going to do it. I was expecting, yeah. obviously, some messaging and stuff. But unfortunately, it ended up being a below average movie for me as a whole. I don't think it's the yeah. worst movie I've ever seen. People no. who are saying that are just wrong. They haven't watched enough they stuff had, this year. <laughs> they haven't watched Eternals, dude. <laughs> I'm like, no, trust me. Let me go watch Eternals, and you'll come back and wish. Uh, there's you never well, and that's that the that Barbie. That's the thing is that there's enough of Ken in this that at least every time they were focused on his plot, at, up until the end, of course. Like I, I think that they legitimately missed a very easy emotional arc for him at the end. Where, mm-hmm. and it's so funny, dude, because. You know, one of the things that they they talk about in this because I I can't remember what her name is, but she plays, she's the um, the the one who is the like mom? the mom, yeah, the actress's yeah. name. Anna Ferrera is that her name? I can't remember. Uh, let me see. Anthony Ferrera. I'm I'm looking. It's not America, right? I think I I'm thinking think of. So. Uh, you're thinking of American Chavez. Yeah, I think you're. right. Let's from, see. Uh, da, 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 what's da, it called? Da, da. Where is she on this? Oh yeah. Dang, she's way down this list. Sure. She's got like a pretty oh, big that. role in this movie, and she's not even top build. Did someone in the troll room know? I'm trying to find her. Do 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 oh, do man. do. Uh, America. I was right. America Ferrera. America Ferrera. Um. Okay. She uh, goes on a couple of these rants at the end of the movie, and at one point she says, you know, you can't say no to a guy, but you can't lead him, lead, you can't sit, like, but you also, like, don't want to lead him on, and, like, they're doing this stuff, and I'm like, you can say no. You can say no, and I thought at, that what was going to end up happening was because, Bar- obviously, Barbie isn't in love with Ken, that she was going to be like Ken, like finally kind of have that a moment of development where she's yeah. like, you know what, I ha- if, if I want to be this person, if I want to find out who I am on my own, um, I have to actually step out and fully reject Ken and not continue to lead him on. But she just continues to lead him on. Like they, she doesn't ever step up and go, no, I just want to, uh, like we we can't do this. Like she yeah. even like continues to talk about like the girlfriend boyfriend relationship thing. It's it's very weird, um, and feels like a cop out to me, where it's like Ken up until the very end of the movie, he's going on this emotional arc where it's like, oh, he's obsessed with, um, Barbie. Oh, he realizes that there, there, is a place where he is shown some some form of respect, and to be honest, they still make fun of it because he tries to like walk into the doctor's office to do surgery. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he thinks he can just walk in and do that and, then, yeah. and they're like, sir, you can't do that. And and so it's like, it's not a situation where it's like, well, because I'm male, I can now, because this is where we we both know 
this conversation ultimately goes with a lot of uh, smooth brains on the internet. Where you go, Ken had the best arc in the movie, and they go, well, you just think that because you are a man. You are male. And it's like... That's what our TikTok screechers are going to say. Oh, I know, I, I know it already. I'm calling it now, Joseph. I'm calling it now. Um, but what they don't understand is, is that he has the emotional arc in the movie. It, it's it's the most solid thing that you're going to be able to get out of of this film, where he he's disrespected. Um, he thinks his entire role is to be like on the beach and to yep. be validated by Barbie. He leaves and goes to the real world, where he is shown he's treated with basic human respect. Yeah, he's yeah human dignity. He gets treated with dignity, and he, you know all of a sudden it's like the worst thing in the world that he's seen some of this and wants some of that for himself in his own world. And he's the villain because of it. And the thing is, is that like they try to make him out to to be the villain, and it's bad the way that he's handling everything. But he's so like, and part of it is because Ryan Gosling is such a good actor, and he's incredibly charismatic. Um, but I, I I'm just like rooting for him through the whole movie, and I'm like, yeah, hey, yeah. And then like I thought, like, all right, well, maybe what's going to happen is that they'll find some sort of uh, middle ground. Or Ken will be like, you know what, I'm going to go back to the real world and try to find out who I am th- who I am, um, because I'm treated correctly there. And it's weird because Barbie just goes, well, you're Ken. And he goes, I'm Ken. And they're all like, yay. And then they disappear for the rest of the movie. And you're like, what was that? It's like you had it. You had this this arc, right? And then they just kind of give that final moment to Barbie where all of a sudden she's like, well, I want to go to the real world. And I'm going, why? What about the real world made you decide you want to go go back? And I guess the the point could be made that it's like, well, she wants to like, she wants to change things. But it's like, what is she going to do? She has no skills. <laughs> like, she and it's it, the irony, dude. The irony in all of it. And they try to make this this joke at one point. I in, think I, th- I think the meaning of her at the end leaving to go to the real world was was that no matter how great Barbie Land is with yeah. the matriarchy and everything, that the real world is always going to be better because you get to. Ex- life is worth life is if i'm this is me being the most generous okay life is worth living yeah even despite all the struggles and hardships you may face in life as a woman Hmm. you Uh, don't want this major you don't want this you don't want to live in this fantasy land over here where everything's perfect right but cellulite since that's mentioned in the movie right and all these things flat and the feet. patriarchy and yeah. flat feet everything <laughs> that comes along with it is better than over here in fantasy land that's me being as generous as possible as far as yeah you know, any type of arc and that the th- I- robbie may had and that's kind of like at the ending when she goes into the gynecologist's office because she finally has real parts, right? That it, that st- struck me as odd. Number one, uh, yeah. Number two, uh, that's kind of the my thought process was okay. I guess they're trying to say, hey, you know, the real world is going to be better than some fantasy land you have in your head. They do just n- to put it simple. I see that based on because like you're going through that and i'm like okay yeah it's like you have that moment with the old woman um not the original barbie but the one sitting on the bench um there there are the like we've talked about this already but there are these little moments throughout it where you're like okay okay but they never followed through on any of that right and it makes me wonder it's like when they were writing this did they think in their head that they were following through on the like Barbie's emotional arc when in reality that wasn't really the case. Yeah. And did Maybe. they they mean to write Ken as well as they did? That's yeah. where I'm I'm sort of lost because you know you mentioned before like Greta Gerwig's like, oh, this 
movie is like very feminist, which I guess is the case. But it, it goes back to like I, I'm confused about your messaging because at moments you're like, well, all like women just want to be treated as equals. And then it's like, oh, okay, cool. But then at the end of the movie, the Barbies are basically like, screw you, Kens. Yeah, they just do to them what they believe was done to themselves. By them. Right. And I'm like, is that what you're going for? Or do you do you want what... And I'll say it like this, because it, it's probably a conversation for another time. Even and We've talked about this before, uh, about my, uh, my thoughts on equality. Um, but their yeah, vision... Yeah, right? Well, I don't think it exists. <laughs> I, I'm just I think it, well, I think it's a I think it's a myth. Um, yeah, it is a myth. I I think that it's this. You know, they they talk about like Ankapistan or whatever. Yeah. I I think the I, idea of a of what people see as equality is uh, a, a complete imagine like imaginative thing. Um, because, Nobody even the people who even preach equality this is the thing they don't live it out consistently in their lives and day to day yeah exactly um yeah. and thomas saw how do you say his last name Saul. soul is that right thomas soul yeah so well we'll so go people say it. it people say it a, a let, few different let ways. me check he, with the judges he judges? was kind of yeah they judges? said it's good <laughs> okay <laughs> he you know he was kind of the one that coined the idea that that no man is equal to himself on any given day and I remember the first time I heard that, and I was like, "Oh, that's really interesting." And so when you really think about it, it's like, "Yeah, quality, quality is a myth." Like, yeah, you should treat people with decent human dignity, um, but there's so much like subtlety to that conversation that you don't get from something like Barbie. And of course, we're gonna get the, "Oh, it's just a movie. Oh, it's just a dumb uh, movie about Barbie." And it's like, okay, well, listen, if you don't want to have this conversation, you can go out the door. And go somewhere else. Um, because it is a very appropriate setting, considering some of the other things that they try to talk about in this movie, to talk about uh, the kind of like mature uh, topics that you could present in a movie like this. Like they, the whole idea of like Bar- the Barbie's image and what she brought to the table being fake. Um, and not what the real world is, is like, I, I think is actually something that would be interesting to explore. Now, they don't yeah. handle it very well. Um, and, and here's the thing. it You think about the Lego movie, a kid's movie, but there are adult themes in that. Yeah. Right? Meaning and adult moments. Yeah, yeah. Not, not. <laughs> don't want people to think that it's like there's weird sexual stuff in the Lego movie, but like, yeah, there's mature ideas in it that are probably going to go over the heads of kids. Yes, exactly. And so that's more <laughs> so how I was expecting this yeah. film to go. Yeah, absolutely. It's clear that it was just a it, the 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 target demographic of the film is the women who played with Barbies. Um, oh, absolutely! You know, I, the, as they were kids and who are now adults, which is fine. There's yeah, nothing, that's where that half half billion wrong. dollars was really coming from. Yeah, there, and there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. It's a great strategy. I just think it could have been a much better written movie. Uh, outside of the writing, I think, and, and and characterizations, like I think Margot's character could have been handled better. Uh, I like Ken's yeah. character. I, I notice like. You know they try and do all this representation with Barbies, <laughs> yeah. but I didn't. I didn't notice one single, and I may have missed it, but I didn't notice one single Asian female Barbie, uh, and I, so I thought that was kind of huh. funny. Um, I, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but when I was watching the movie, I, I did <laughs> notice that because they show like all these different versions. No, 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 you're wrong. Simu Liu is there. No, Asian Barbie. Like, yeah, not Ken, but Barbie. Yeah, There's Simu Liu. David. No, 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 no. He's not a Barbie. He's a Ken. No. I'm talking about like Margot Robbie. Yeah, Simu. You know they had Margie. No, <laughs> no. Don't argue. He's a kid. He's not like troll a... room. Back me up. <laughs> no. I can't believe we're getting an argument about this. So I know he's. A, I know he's a kid. It was a joke. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So that's pretty much 
my thoughts on the Barbie movie. Uh, you probably had more thoughts than I did, but I, I was I excited. Get... I was excited yeah. for this, and I was let down at the end because Act <laughs> One was fine, Act Two got a tad bit. Act Two was fine too. Act Three was just a letdown of the movie, <laughs> more so. You know what I mean? Yeah. If it wasn't for Act, if it wasn't for act Three, I would have been like, okay. It's it's then odd. I, this is a all right movie. You know? there, there's all these like, like a standard th- flick. Yeah, there's all these things that like you would expect that either America Ferrera, her daughter, or Barbie in some form or another would have had a closer relationship. Like that kind of gets it's not it's not very well established. And I thought like oh, okay, well maybe one. They're gonna like the three of them. Maybe they'll go on a, a sort. Of, it'll be kind of this fun, quirky adventure thing, uh, where they'll really start to understand each other. But then, like yeah. America Ferrera just gets like super feminist, and her daughter's like, "I love you now," and you're just like, "Oh, <laughs> uh, okay." Like, Dude, mm. I thought it was pretty funny when Margot Robbie initially runs into. Uh, the Mattel Corporation, and she's trying yeah. to escape, and she randomly runs into that room where the uh, original Barbie was being kept. Yeah, and I was just like, "Why is she randomly staying in this?" Yeah, corporate. It's, it's the thing about scene. there's there's this thing that happens in writing sometimes where they like ran, random equals funny, and there's a lot yeah. of that in this. Yes. But it always just came off as frustrating to me. Because yeah. random weird stuff can be... It, it, it's like, it can be done in like when you're when you're sort of like... Uh, it's sort of that thing like I was saying when she talks about not having genitals to the, to the construction workers. Like, it, that came out of left field because I just wasn't expecting that to be the way that that went. And so, like, mm-hmm. comedy can be found in that. But, like, comedy isn't always just, like, random things happening. Yeah. Sometimes that's just, like... Oh, like why? You know, it's like if that's the reaction, it's like you, you might have messed up there. Um, though the quote unquote theater that I was in, Joseph, there was quite a bit of laughter going on. So uh, <laughs> I, I'm just saying that. Mine too. You know, I'm I'm not, I'm not the demographic for this, which, you know, I prefaced at the beginning. Um, that's but. All I had to say about yeah, I was hoping that I was going to be surprised, and that, uh, I, and again, I think some of the stuff in this is being completely overblown. Um, yeah, I, I think that's pretty typical. I think people are just trying to do, you know, rage bait, like sensationalized, yeah, yeah. titles it, regarding the movie. Rage bait is like it, it, it works. Um, it does, and I don't know, like. I, I think that Indiana Jones was significantly more frustrating. Um, and this movie, hands down. Yeah, Indiana Jones I think it's probably worse. the is, worst movie I've seen this year. Um, this is way more pleasant to get through. Than uh, Indiana it, it's Jones. still rough in some places, cause, like, and I, I will never watch this again. Um, I, I have no interest in it. I can't recommend it to anybody. Um, it, but it's not as just painfully bad as uh as the um as Indiana Jones was Dial of Destiny. Um you know, Whoopa, find Whoopa was asking brief. about the trans Barbie. Um it was just brief. I didn't really even notice the uh trans Barbie character funny wh- enough. Was that not uh Kate McKinnon? No, it wasn't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she was a weird Barbie. Right, but w- there was like a Yes, there, it was the doctor, Barbie. It's they don't they don't focus that much on it, so they don't really make uh, it that much of a point. Was she the glasses one at the end, or am I thinking of a different? Oh, I can't remember. I that's just what I've heard. I mean, clearly they don't focus on it enough because I didn't. See yeah, it. I don't. I don't even remember. I don't even, dude. If if and that's it, what I mean. Like, I we wasn't paying about- attention, I guess enough if. Like it was, it was so. Like I remember the doctor thing, but I just don't have. It wasn't clear enough to me. I mean, she was passing enough, I guess. Then. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. Like even when Will Ferrell is like, "I want you to call me," uh, a woman. What was it that he said? 
exactly and then the person's like no like that's what i mean there's different ways uh, that they again that that's kind of confusing the messaging in it but I, I was telling you this earlier this week about greta gerwig basically the themes in all her movies are this ladybird how hard it is to be a wo- a young woman in the early 2000s. Yeah. Little women, how hard it is to be a woman in the 1860s. <laughs> Barbie, how hard it is to be a woman in 2023. Yep. Snow White, how hard it is to be a woman in the 1500s. With magic Chronicles dwarves. of Narnia. Chronicles of Narnia, how hard it is did, to be a woman in Narnia. <laughs> did you see um the thing about I can't I just I saw an uh, a quick thing about the Chronicles of Narnia where they're like the last battle may be an in- inappropriate ending for modern audiences. <laughs> yes. And dude, it made me realize like you can't, it's so like Hollywood and all of that stuff is so robotic now that you can't even have what in like, can you believe that the Chronicles of Narnia is edgy now? Like that, the last battle is too edgy. Because it's Christian, y- yeah, That's it's, why. it's so it's, weird. You know, is at the end of the day, it's because it's Christian. Let's just be yeah, great about um, it. Well, but I wouldn't recommend it, man. Um, she, your your sister might have a good time with it, but I feel like you'd probably be miserable. Um, yeah, it's not. It's not. If if you're like really uh, try to go see like a matinee. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that's what I would say. And then I would also say, like, I think your sister would probably enjoy it because it looks pretty. And that speaks that that is an important part. Like visual aspects are an important part of the movie. But as far as the messaging is very. It's very heavy handed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It and I mean, is. there's no other way around yeah. it. If she's asking you to, to, to go see it or whatever, it, it could be a good opportunity for you to like ask her questions when you get out of it. Yep. She'd be like, hey, what, like, what did you think of that? Like, what did you think of, of the movie? And if she's like, oh, do it was funny her, and do pretty. You know or, why or, yeah. the patriarchy is important? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you understand why we must live in the real world and not the Barbie world? Yeah. Um, oh, and we've, we've asked, is it really edgy or is it just because there's heavy Christian themes? They're one and the same at this point in time. Yeah. In, in our current reality, in the year of our Lord, 2023, uh, they are one and the same. Sometimes sacrifice wa- can be made to make family happy and indoctrinate, I mean, educate. <laughs> <laughs> I really think that you should title when you put the Barbie review out on YouTube, you should title it uh, Incel Barbie because that's kind of what Margo characters character reminded me of was like a, a female version of an incel i guess i it it's really hard for me to like um they and you know oh the other thing and then i guess we'll move on um okay. i didn't i i didn't think the joke worked where the narrator makes fun of how pretty margot robbie is um this movie is constantly trying to like lift women up and then takes this like massive uh crack at Margot Robbie being attractive and like oh yeah she she's having she's actually like got feelings and she's going through all this but that doesn't really matter so we're going to make fun of her like that was kind of the way that joke came yeah. off to me cuz it's this emotional mo- oh, yeah it's the same stuff that we deal with all the time where it's like they're having this emotional moment and it's like hey let's completely undercut this by trying to put in a bad joke you know? yeah like because i don't i don't have a problem like i think the premise behind like oh hey barbie starts having cellulite she starts developing into a becoming a real 30 something year old woman or yeah whatnot, yeah works and i think that's a great uh line to thread line to go because again like just because it's a Barbie film and the primary character is is supposed to be a woman doesn't mean that you still can't relate to people uh, different things about a character, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, and because as a man, she, she has and, and learning like, oh, hey, you know what? I realize now as a thirty-something-year-old, ah, man, I'm not like I used to be when I was a teenager. You right. know what I mean? Right. And so you don't have to see yourself in a movie to be able to relate to a character, but it just. Because it's not completed well, in a satisfactory sat, in a satisfactory way for me, yeah. satisfying way for me, if I can freaking talk, uh, 
<laughs> uh, it just, you know, unfortunately fell off for me. Yeah, and, um, you know, they have that somewhat emotional moment where she looks over at the old woman. It's probably some of the best acting that Margot does in the movie where there's not a whole lot that's said, but you can tell what Barbie is thinking in the moment looking at this old woman. Yes. And the kind of, like, conflicted nature of, like, what's going on with her. and Like, just, she doesn't totally understand, but she sees something in that. And she has this really, like, heartfelt moment. And this is what I say with, like, the messaging and this being really all over the place because they just don't stick the landing with a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Where it's like they, they keep... Thought, like, a lot of people kept yeah. saying how random that scene was. And I no. Was thinking, I think that's one of the better scenes in the movie i see why greta wanted to keep that because i know that she kept saying how the studio wanted to uh, cut that scene out but that's wild dude because it's like i don't know maybe they hate old people or something but like the the idea of barbie living in a like you know we've talked about this fantasy world it's it's like perfect in some regard um and she goes out into the real world and she basically sees an old person for the first time and it has this, like, realization that, like, oh, like, this is different. Like, there's something weird here. Like, yep. you know, she isn't, like, what you would consider, like, tr- you know, uh, she's not Barbie, right? She's not that traditional um, beauty or, like, that standard of it um, that, that Barbie sets. And she still looks at her and, and has, like, a pretty profound moment where she looks at her and she says, you're beautiful. And then, like, the woman looks back at her and goes, oh, I know. You know, it's it, like it, it's, it's it, th- that that scene. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, 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 I'm done. I'm done. OK. Yeah. And that scene matters. I think they could have added more to it if, she, yeah. you know, she would have been like, I've led a as an older woman. Right. Kind of like having a mentor to mentee moment right there. I've led a fulfilled yeah. life. I have a family. I have this or that, whatnot. And um, even if she, she didn't do that, it could have been something that happens along the way that is. Uh. Like, there's more fulfillment to your life than just in your looks. Yeah. And vanity. Yeah. And they just don't do that because it's like every, all of the messaging seems to be about like, oh, you can do whatever you want. And it's like, great. But like, there isn't. Made the WNBA popular. Yeah. You can't do that. No, no not at all. Um, but there's nothing that I, I, I saw as like, man, this, this would really potentially inspire someone that, that maybe, um, feels like their life kind of sucks or something like that you know like movies used to do that there used to be that sort of like hopefulness in them and i did not get that from this at all um it's sort of sort of dour at the end a little bit um i don't think quite as much i i didn't personally i I didn't think it was like quite as dour at the end as i as some people had had said but um yeah, it just kind of, it's like, well, oh, like, that's where we're going with this? Well, we were speaking of political brain rot earlier today and how it has not only, you know, it's easy to point it out on the left side, but also, well, it's easy for us also to point out on the right side as sure, well. Sure. Uh, but how it has affected the right, because it doesn't seem like it gets talked about enough. And what I mean is there is someone uh, that posted, I saw it on Twitter, a picture of Margot Robbie with no makeup on and they were like margot robbie is mid and i'm just like first off <laughs> why are you taking time out of your day to talk about anyone like that uh, yeah secondly we don't have to lie just because you thought the movie was bad <laughs> like yeah you don't yeah, have to I, make up things you, you know what you know what i mean yeah I mean, you know what like i don't think words, i don't think that it's I'm cope. sorry i just wanted to, no it's yeah. just cope it's cope that's what it is yeah. The, the now, movie. Again, I don't think that like Margot Robbie is, you know, top of line. Oh my gosh, drop dead gorgeous. All this stuff. Like, oh, oh, she's a, you know, she breaks the scale type of deal. But she's <laughs> certainly not mid. Yeah. Like, come on. That's a really bad opinion. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, you just need to go get your eyes checked. That's, you know what I mean. That's like saying Ryan Gosling is mid. It's just weird to. Yeah. It's just odd to talk about anyone. In that way, if you're talking like, about her, in, her as an actress, like I could see an argument for that. Like I don't think she's like really that great of an actress. Generally, I think she has a lot of potential in that realm. Um, but it's just an odd comment to make about someone. Yeah, like again, well, not dude, in the sense it's, of 
not in the sense of like talking personally with someone, but to go out of your way, like it, even in a, in a natural setting to and bringing it up in an organic way, not to be hurtful to the person or just you're just you know yeah. talking to people and giving your, your thoughts, right? Maybe there's nothing wrong with that, but to go out of your way and make a post and say <laughs> it's good. It's like, and I saw this other dude uh, say, like, if you're a man and you go see. Uh, Barbie, you're a beta male. And oh, I just really just wanted cool, to put on man. a wig and go see Barbie. <laughs> I wish I still, I wish I had the soundboard working. I could put Adam Curry's little phrase up. You know, it's like what you say about others is what you mean about yourself. <laughs> um, yeah, I, dude, I conversations it's around like, a lot of this stuff. Let people enjoy a movie. And it's like one of the yeah. things I thought Brittany Venti brought up that was a good point that I remember was it's like you can't like as soon as influencers. Uh, give their opinion, right? It's like a hive mind t- takes yeah. over. Yeah, yeah. Well, it didn't affect ticket sales. Of, 